Hey everybody, Rob here. It's time for a couple of new malicious compliance stories. First one, you said any character. Let's jump right in. Please consider subscribing and tapping the like button. It really helps the channel. Many moons ago, I was part of a malicious compliance. So here it goes. Background. The summer before I entered high school, the Ministry of Education decided to change the standardized testing they used for entry to universities. It had happened in the past, and usually it took a year to implement changes. But this plan was really complicated and needed two years to implement. Laymen like you and me can't comprehend. It's called throw everything at the wall and see what sticks. Guess which class got to be the lab rats? Yep, mine. We started school with only a vague idea of what the changes would be until mid-October. Then, we learned that the first changes will be implemented on the midterms. The midterms used to be two weeks and provided 40% of the final grade, but the new plan was a full month and count for only 20% towards the final grade. Also, a major player for the malicious compliance was our literature teacher. Let's call her Karen. Now, I have to admit, she was good at her subject. The problems in her teaching came from prejudice and preconceptions. On a 25-people class, she used to work with four or five of them, to be specific, kids from upper-class families or the best part of town. The rest of us were just background for her. A few of the parents had complained, but due to reasons we learned later, she was always engaging during inspections and kept her job. The Malicious Compliance Midterms time! It's one of the new tests. It's creative writing. Now, as I said, this was one of the new tests. The ministry had said general instructions for the tests, but left the specifics to each school. So for this one, Karen set the specifics. The general instructions for this one asked from the teacher to pick a book from the syllabus and the pupil to write at least 800 words from the point of view of one of the characters. Karen had a hard-on for epics, so she chose the Iliad, expecting everyone to pick a hero. Everybody did except three of us, JK, Indy, and myself. I don't know if we wanted to rebel against the system or against Karen, but the three of us didn't follow the norm. Now, JK was a really good student, but had the usual trouble in Karen's class. She chose Andromache, the wife of Hector. She described the last day of Hector from Andromache's point of view. My friend Indy is a mythology buff. He became an archaeologist, that's why Indy, and absolutely hated Karen's teachings of the material. He picked Zeus. He basically wrote Zeus's point of view, noticing every female named in the Iliad and his horniness. Me, I chose Cassandra. She had the gift of prophecy, but the curse of never being believed. I went the whole point of view being, we are all doomed and never believed. The results come out and we are the only failed 8, 7, and 7 out of 20 because we, according to Karen, completely missed the point of the test. But, the aftermath, unbeknownst to everybody except the principal, the ministry had sent instructions to grade the tests independently of the teachers. They published their grades, and three particular tests have huge grade discrepancies. So one misty morning, the three of us are called to the meeting room. Inside is our principal, a clearly fuming Karen, and three people we don't know. They introduce themselves as part of the Ministry of Education. They want us to explain, why did we choose those characters? We all said it said any character, so we chose ones we liked. Every time we said that, they glanced at Karen. They thanked us, told us that their grade will go towards our final grade. Karen had inspectors dropping on her unexpectedly. As I said in the beginning, she had passed the local ones because of something she did. She was having an affair with the assistant director of the local education department and he always notified her before the inspection. Now, they came directly from the ministry, and she was always unprepared. She was allowed to finish the year, and then was dismissed. The ministry took a year and a half to figure out the system. We were the first class to officially take the new standardized test. Creative writing was part of the literature exam. JK became a journalist and a writer, 
Indy became an archaeologist. As for me, I'm in here. So the teacher tried to fail you because you missed the point, but unbeknownst to her, she would be failed because she missed the point of teaching. On to our next story. Political signs can only go up 30 days before any election? Okay, let's jump right in. So back in August, my wife and I decided we wanted to put up a sign to promote our preferred candidate for the upcoming presidential election here in Texas. I wanted to see what my town's ordinances said about what and where we could put the sign up as we were planning to put a banner on our fence that is very prominent facing traffic that goes along the side of our house but that is at the edge of our property. The ordinances had a few rules about where the sign could and couldn't be. Example, don't put them on a utility pole. The max size of the sign, 36 square feet, how high off the ground, etc. It also said that political signs would be allowed 30 days prior to any election. Note here, it didn't say the election, which would have implied that the election had to be related to the sign, as far as I was concerned it could be, as the ordinance said in plain English, any election. So we ordered a 36 square foot banner off of Etsy, nailed and tied it to the fence on a Saturday in August. The next Monday, code enforcement dropped by and said something along the lines, we had an inquiry about your sign, it isn't in compliance with the ordinance, and asked us to take it down. I wasn't home at the time, my wife told him that I wasn't home, but that I had read the ordinance and it said any election and that we were in compliance. There was some back and forth. They settled on if you request a sign permit that would give us a month with the sign up, then we would be within 30 days of early voting in Texas, which is how the town has traditionally interpreted the meaning of 30 days prior to any election. So I get home from running the errand I was on and my wife tells me what has transpired. I still thought the sign was legal under the ordinance, but to make my wife happy, I applied for and was granted the permit. Two days later, the same code enforcement officer came to our house and said that the town manager had overruled his issuing of the permit and that the sign needed to come down. I told him that I only applied for the permit to make my wife happy and that the sign has always been legal under the ordinance and that the town was not without choices as it could clean up the language in the ordinance. More back and forth, I asked him what the next steps were, you know, do you remove the sign, would have made great footage from my security camera, do you cite me, etc, etc. He said he would talk to the town manager. I said that I would be happy to discuss it with the town manager. So the town manager calls me later that day says things like, most people don't put 36 square foot signs on residential property. I told him that I wasn't most people, that I was following the letter of the ordinance and that the sign was up in accordance with any election, including the fact that several of the 54 primaries are currently happening, 50 states plus territories plus voters overseas, and that those are all elections for the purposes of the ordinance. He says that he would contact the town's lawyer. Hours later, he calls back. I guess the town's lawyer was not busy that day and was able to opine instantly on the matter. He says the town's lawyer thinks the ordinance is enforceable, but that they have decided to not take an enforcement action. I told him I still believed I was in compliance because I was following the any election provision, but that he was making the right choice as there was a pandemic going on but I had also been doing some research. Many people think of Texas as very similar to the rest of the South, where local government is best, but my understanding of how things work in Texas is that cities and towns cannot do things that the state doesn't allow them to do. So things are often enumerated or restricted at the state level. And it just so happens that Texas has a chapter on political signs. Title 15 is regulating political funds and campaigns. Chapter 259 is political signs. 259.003 is titled regulation of political signs by municipality and says in part, a municipal charter provision or ordinance that regulates signs may not for a sign that contains primarily a political message and that is located on private real property 
with the consent of the property owner, prohibit the sign from being placed. It looks like there are some caveats elsewhere in the chapter, such as it applies to signs 36 square feet and smaller, etc., but definitely applies to my circumstances. So the town's ordinance restricts someone from placing a political sign 30 days before any election. It sure seems like that violates this section of Texas law. Now armed with some information, I went to town council and spoke at one of the open forums where residents can address the council on any topic. My town is pretty small, full of people who don't share my political views, and the council reflects that pretty well. But I told them about how the ordinance appeared to violate Texas law. I also told them about a recent Supreme Court ruling from 2015, Reed v. Town of Gilbert, that set a bit of a surprising precedent. Basically, under certain conditions, the town might have to survive strict scrutiny when taking enforcement actions on signs and demonstrate a narrowly tailored, compelling government interest for why signs could only be up for short times versus other signs being up for longer times. Anyway, the town has worked with me on this issue, and the town manager is a busy person but did say that the town's lawyer and him would circle up and propose changes to council in the coming months. It's amazing that both parties were acting like adults while pursuing their separate interests in this situation, a very rare thing indeed. I also appreciate that OP left out any particular affiliation in the story, and I'm just glad that they fought for their right to have that sign up, regardless of who was on it. I'd like to thank both OPs for posting their stories to the Malicious Compliance subreddit. You can visit them at the links in the description below. Please go there and give them an upvote. Once again, this is Rob from Karma Comment Chameleon saying thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that subscribe button, drop a like, and share it with your friends. And we'll see you in the next one.